hi everyone so after i made my video the other day um i had quite a lot of really good feedback a lot of support it felt really really good and i also found out that recently there was a new documentary that came out about jehovah's witnesses and so a lot of things are being talked about right now a lot of people are speaking right now and this is something i've been wanting to do for a really long time so i now feel like while I'm like sufficiently triggered, I can talk. I think it seems like if I am currently triggered, I can talk, but normally I kind of shy away from talking when I'm triggered. So I don't want to say anything bad, but I have been trying to do this for a long time. And I think that if that's how I'm going to be able to do it, then let me do it that way. So I'm going to try and keep myself like cool, but I have a feeling that um, this video uh, is probably going to get demonetized. That's fine. I just want people to know but I just want to give you a content warning, a trigger warning. This is going to get very, very dark right at the end of the video. I'm going to tell you my personal experience growing up in the Jehovah's Witnesses and surrounding Armageddon. So that's what I want to talk about today is Armageddon and uh, end of the world situation that Jehovah's Witnesses believe in, why they should be considered a doomsday cult and the damage it can do to people in general, but especially children. I was never an adult Jehovah's Witness. I was only ever a child. I figured out at the age of 12 that I didn't believe it anymore and wanted to leave. So I basically waited the rest of my childhood to grow up so I could just actually be free. So all my experiences that you will hear from will be from a child's perspective. But a lot of what I'm gonna speak about today is actually from what I felt like at the time. So what I'm gonna do before I get to that content, I'm gonna build you a picture about the belief system around Armageddon so that you can understand why my mindset was a certain way at that age and why I don't think I was probably the only one. I've never heard of anyone else feeling this way that I felt as a child, but I cannot believe that I was the only one. I'd imagine there's many, many children who felt this way. And I just, I feel that if I maybe say mine, now I'm in a kind of mindset where I can discuss it, maybe other people can come forward as well, because while people are talking about the dangers of being Jehovah's Witness, I really wanna project the dangers on children because the dangers that happened to me as a, as a kid, They've been long lasting. My whole life has been affected by my childhood and it's all revolving around Jehovah's Witnesses. Anyway, I will start. There's some people who just seem to, once they leave, they just completely forget about it. They somehow manage to untangle spaghetti and manage to detangle that part of their life from ever memories. I, I'm not one of those people. Almost every single thing I have a memory of as a child is somehow connected with Jehovah's Witnesses, I'll be very hard pushed to talk about my past without mentioning them. And so for a very long time, I had managed to do some kind of mental gymnastics where I acknowledged my past, but I wasn't traumatized by it. Since I had kids, something kind of clicked in my brain and I wanted more answers and I couldn't get them. So um, that is where I, I began getting shunned by my mum because I was asking too many questions. So I probably will never ever speak to my mum again. I don't expect to ever speak to her again. And that's not my doing. That is what she knows that she should do according to her belief system. So the brainwashing, anyway, the, the point of that, the brainwashing affects people differently. And for me, I am really quite traumatized from my upbringing. So Joe's Witnesses believe that Armageddon is going to happen anytime they actually have had solid set in stone doomsdays in the past that obviously didn't come to fruition i think there's about three of them where they actually predicted a date and it obviously didn't happen during those periods of times people did leave but at the same time there's still enough of them around the reason why i said probably uh, millions of kids is because they do tend to inflate their numbers but even if they have inflated them I think last time I heard they were saying that they had eight million so even if that was inflated I'd still assume there would still be a fair few million and therefore a fair few million kids but that's just like look, even if it's 10 kids one kid who's at danger of being brainwashed in this way it's not right so I shouldn't I, I shouldn't have to feel that I need to kind of create this picture of how many kids there are but at the same time, it does seem to be needed because for so many years we have been speaking out and things have been happening. And in general, the media tends to ignore us and what we have to say. So I kind of feel that like I just really want to add my voice to that. So I find it really hard to talk about and I keep going on tangents and I knew that would happen. But um, yeah, anyway, they believe that Armageddon could come at any time. And Armageddon is uh, basically how they see it is how they see it now 
is that it could come tomorrow, it could come 50 years, it could come in five minutes. And they kind of judge it, or at least my family did, my mum, whenever the news would be on and there would be something bad, whether it be a bad storm somewhere or a shooting somewhere or, you know, 9-11, it was always everything that happened that was bad, that was a sign that Armageddon was going to come because God says that he won't let the earth get too bad. So if things are this bad now, it's got to be really, really close. That's how it was always put to you or put to me at least. I can only speak from my experience from but when I have spoken and talked to other Jehovah's Witnesses, it's uncanny how similar our experiences are and the things that were said to us are almost word for word with some of the things as well. So I'm just saying that as well. But just bear in mind, this is all just how it was put to me being raised as a Jehovah's Witness. Um, the other thing is, um, Jehovah's Witnesses, when Armageddon comes, they will be the only people who will survive it. Trixie, my cat, no, no. So it will only be the Jehovah's Witnesses who actually survive Armageddon. And it's not even all the Jehovah's Witnesses. I kind of touched on this before. You have to be good enough. It's not good enough to just believe in Jehovah in the way that Jehovah's Witnesses believe in it. You have to be super pious. You have to be really well behaved. Something that people get confused a lot when you talk about Jehovah's Witnesses is they do tend to simplify it a lot is that you're just a quirky bunch of people, but it's just like other religions you worship in a similar way. You don't. Jehovah's Witnesses, they do encompass your whole life. They do control every single thing about what what you do your whole life is consumed by it every single minute of the day down to the point that at christmas if someone would wish me oh merry christmas and i'd be like oh you too and i'd be like oh, sh i said you too that meant i just wished them a merry christmas did anyone hear me say that to that point that you moderate your speech and you wouldn't even say you wouldn't have to say merry christmas the guilt would come from just saying you too you know or saying thanks if someone has said oh happy birthday but like, oh thanks it's like Oh. But at the same time, they actually don't let you refuse presents. So someone who's worldly wants to give you a present or a card. Like, I know some people do refuse, but it's not required to refuse because that would be considered rude. But at the same time, you shouldn't be that enthusiastic about getting it. And you should always take opportunities like that to correct people, or say correct people who are worldly about what we believe in, how you should treat us, and how really they should be behaving too. It always ends up being patronising in some way. But anyway, not all Jehovah's Witnesses will be saved at Armageddon, but you are expected to be a perfect Jehovah's Witness, so they don't expect many to, like, die at Armageddon, but I'm telling you, almost every Jehovah's Witness I know has breaks at least a minor rule, and it's like, if you think Jehovah really is knowing everything, then you wouldn't be breaking that, you wouldn't be watching Sex in the City, would you? Anyway, getting off on tangents again. Oh my god. <laughs> so triggered. Um, but they believe that everyone will basically die. There'll be lots of uh natural disasters, things like that. Everyone will die, but the Jehovah's Witnesses will be protected by God. So what kind of scared me about that as a child is that we would be watching these people die. I'd kind of just imagine, you know, me in my living room watching look who's talking and suddenly shit starts going down and i go outside my friends are running out their houses terrified getting zapped by meteors or whatever yeah i would just imagine just standing around and everyone just watching everyone dying like right in front of me and then the other traumatizing part of it is like we're not really we're expected to clean up the earth so we might like clear up all the destruction and stuff like that and rebuild but the bodies generally we don't we're not meant to do much it does describe the birds eating the body it's quite a gruesome thought when you think about it as a child that you know your mate that you've gone around to their house for a barbecue for like it's like laying in their garden dead and the crows are pecking at them and stuff and that's something i forgot to point out the other day when i was going through the my book of bible stories and a lot of the pictures there's always a child somewhere in there looking terrified in the bad situation so just because it's written for books you then put yourself in that child's situation so when i'd think of armageddon um, i'd often just think of the kids i knew i mean not fortunately for me but a lot of the kids where i grew up were really really racist so they weren't my friends but the people who were then they meant extra much to me and I was like these are not bad people I know <laughs> bad people I don't want to see them dead being eaten and just like being so happy we inherited the earth because that's the thing they say that we're gonna or Jehovah's Witnesses are going to inherit the earth normally when you inherit something someone has to die you, you kind of feel that you're meant to be gleeful at the idea of Armageddon coming because you're going to get this paradise that you're going to inherit but to me that always seemed like I've got to be happy that 
everyone else that I know is going to die. It's so heartbreaking for a child to think about it. Because you kind of start feeling like maybe I shouldn't get too attached to these people. And that's exactly what they want you to think as well, by the way. They want you as a child to not get attached to these people so that it's easier for them to keep you bubbled up and ignorant and uncaring. They teach you to be so unempathetic. Like, it's, it's horrible. I hate everything about their ideology it's just disgusting it really makes me sick i have a lump in my throat just thinking about how i felt about seeing my friends i got the images in my head the same images i'd think of when i was a kid i can still see them in my head now and so that was pretty rough <laughs> more things about armageddon the other thing so armageddon is actually one of the very first things i started to question as a child one of the things that helped me to start waking up this was very early so i had a lot of years afterwards where i was i was always i think mum always kind of knew i was a 50 50 chance whether i'd stay or if i wouldn't i think she didn't try much with my elder brother like my, my middle brother i guess you'd call him but he's older than me i think she always knew he was a lost cause but my eldest brother he was like we always called him the golden balls because he always did everything perfectly but I was one of those troublesome kids who asked a lot of questions and one of the first things I started questioning was Armageddon so because they'd say that basically if everyone everyone who's ever lived who died before Armageddon will be resurrected and they get to have I think it's a hundred years for us Jehovah's Witnesses to reteach all these people who's ever died who've just come back from the dead everyone who dies at Armageddon that's it you're done you don't get to come back okay so that's important to remember for the future that i'm going to talk about okay that i'm starting to get to the nitty gritty of the shit now so um i'll be like so if everyone's coming back is that like everyone is that like the victorians nazis egyptians and they'll be like yeah it's gonna be everyone's gonna come back and i'll be like okay so are they coming back as babies or are they coming back as grown-ups because if they're babies how are we going to look after all these babies because even then as a child they let us know that we were a small group of people so if this is everyone even the people who were alive at that point i thought would be too many if they all died and then come back as babies for us to look after which of course it would be i weren't a dumb kid you know <laughs> but um they're saying like forever like all these people are going to come back. So I'll be like, well, how are we going to look after all these babies? And if they don't come back as babies and they come back as adults, like pretty much as they died, what about all the people who speak different languages to us? People who speak ancient languages that we don't speak anymore? Like, how are we going to speak, yo, don't kill us? Like, like barbarians and stuff. Like, it just made zero sense to me. And I'd ask, like, how is this going to happen? And at the same time, I might be rebuilding the earth. Like, are you for real? Like, what? I just it's still I'm, I'm still so frustrated because I never got an answer not an answer that I felt was satisfactory anyway they'd always just say God will make it work you know it will be okay he will he won't like help us physically but he will help us manage and I'm just like I don't understand I don't understand how this could ever possibly work so that was one of the things I first started questioning as a child about Armageddon and it used to frustrate my mum used to frustrate brothers and elders so I would just kind of bring it out. I would be one of those kids who would just be like, so if this happens, <laughs> and then they'd be like, oh, this is the answer. And I'd be like, mm, but, <laughs> and they'd, just, they'd get really frustrated with me. So I was one of those, I guess like, it's not a bad thing as a kid to be like that, to be inquisitive. But for them, that's like the worst kind of child. You don't want to have a child that does that. You want a child who just gets told the answer and just believes it. That's pretty much how everyone should just behave. Like anyone who questions anything would normally get in trouble. But I was a child, so I guess... I kind of got away with it but i did get treated pretty shitty when i would ask questions like they did not like it they made it known that they didn't like it and that really i shouldn't be asking the questions mum would tell me that i shouldn't ask so many questions so anyway i will move on now to the darker part of this story so i mentioned in my other video jehovah's witnesses don't baptize babies they feel that if you're going to make a promise not to sin you should at least know the promise you're making or at least that's what i was told of course so my mum said we could get baptized at around the age of 10 if we wanted to by the time i was 10 i was already heavily questioning if i wanted to grow up to be jehovah's witness and um, so i already hated the lifestyle always did always hated what we had to do but i believed it was the right thing to do so regardless i thought i would have to be a jehovah's witness but by the time of 10 i wasn't really thinking that anymore so i didn't actually ever get baptized um which is a whole different thing which puts us in a different category from other ex-jehovah's witnesses we're all 
bad people to them but it's just it's a bit more severe if you got baptized the shunning is more severe or can be i'm getting completely shunned now but i'll have to explain that another time i lost my track of thought where was i right yeah so i couldn't get baptized so when i was around five six i want to say something like that i realized that i wasn't baptized and by this point i was fully aware that aware that armageddon was coming things are getting bad the radio's on every morning tv news is on like tv music videos they're getting worse and worse my mum is constantly moaning about how bad the world's getting so i'm thinking it's definitely going to happen anytime soon and i'm thinking shit i am not baptized obviously i don't think shit we didn't even swear like but in my mind i'm panicking i'm thinking i'm not baptized now jehovah's witnesses you're not really considered a jehovah's witness officially unless you're baptized so for me i kind of felt that i'm not baptized so i'm not really a jehovah's witness i don't even stand a chance of surviving armageddon if it does come tomorrow if it comes today i don't stand a chance i'm going to die and then i won't get brought back i won't get resurrected because i died at armageddon going back to what i was saying earlier if you die at armageddon you don't come back if you die before armageddon you do come back so i started to uh ask questions to a family friend uh she was an adult um about how much cowpol which is uh, a child's paracetamol liquid medicine you would have to drink to to die and I did try and drink bottles of cowpaw from time to time when I could get hold of them, but, you know, the cap's quite hard to get off and I was little. Um, it doesn't change the fact that I was actively trying to end my life at such a young age because I was so scared that the world was going to end and I was going to die and that I wouldn't get resurrected and it was just because I didn't get chance to get baptized uh because i thought if i died before by commit like by you know ending my life uh that then i would get brought back at armageddon that was going to happen anytime soon anyway so i wouldn't even be dead that long you know but i guess um, the family friend ended up telling my mum that i've been asking these questions because i remember around that time mum did sit me down to have a chat and it just kind of seemed out of the blue but she was just saying about how like when people uh end their life uh jehovah doesn't like that and he he wouldn't bring back a jehovah's witness who had done that because they knew better than to to do that so that then kind of put me in a catch 22 where if I stayed alive and wasn't baptised and Armageddon come, I still felt that I was going to die at Armageddon. But then also, if I tried to bring that about before Armageddon, I wouldn't then get brought back either. I lived with that fear till about the age of 10. <laughs> so for about five years, every day, every minute of the day, every time I went to sleep, I thought I'd wake up and the world would start to end or it was just going to start happening and like i say i will get around to showing you more pictures of devastating doomsday images that they draw for you that aren't like in kids books specifically like the my book of bible stories but they they are books that are read by everyone in the family together at kingdom halls book studies at home it's not like it's me it's like family friendly it's, it's, that's how they see it so when you're fed those images of what you're being told is going to happen, it really does paint a picture. And I just really wanted to tell that story because I really can't think I'm the only child who got affected in that way. God. Um, I think there's probably lots of kids who thought that way. I probably think there's lots of kids still thinking that way. Anyway. I'm, I'm going to try and make more videos because i've been wanting to for a long time one of my big fears is that i'll die early and never get to tell all the terrible things people have done to me so i kind of just want to be like fuck you <laughs> about it i don't care if 10 people see it or no people see it i just want to say it so i'm gonna leave it here if you'd like it <laughs> um 
like and subscribe for me maybe leave me a comment so sometimes i make these videos i find it quite overwhelming when i get comments but i do like getting them and i do read every single one i'll try and like them and then get back to you at a later date when i'm less triggered and yeah i'll chat to you soon bye Fingers.